Like, bruh. Lowry, you just got to keep pushing and keep pulling, man. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. That's what you ought to do. Come on, now. <laughs> what are we doing here? Double in. <laughs> bruh, good steal. Okay, that's actually was a foul for Danny, but it's okay. <laughs> Pass back. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <sighs> Good rebound, OG. Good rebound. What we doing here? One more. Yep. <laughs> Rip through. <laughs> My God, Joe. Bruh. And then obviously he's like, God damn. No, but stays here. Stays here. They slapped it out and we can see on the replay. <laughs> off I comes fingertips. Nobody touched the damn blood clot ball. How many plays has he have to suss? Is this the bubble? Oh no, the bubble was, you know, it was the bubble sussing me. I was in myself. This is who you always were. Bruh, Siakam, what are you doing, man? It's at, uh, like, blood clots. Screen. One four screen. One four, right? Are you guys ready? <laughs> no one listening to Danny. My God, Danny. No one wants to hear your plan, G. <laughs> They ran it. He threw it right at his legs, right at Embiid's legs. Come on, that's be, gotta be a better pass, Simmons, man. <laughs> what we doing, okay, Embiid? <laughs> Good pump fakes. Why would you double Van Fleet? <laughs> My goodness, Seth. <laughs> Jump shot crazy like he's on meth. My goodness, man, bro, what are we talking about? Down five, really? Really, y'all? Really? That's what we doing? <laughs> Kill him, Lowry. <laughs> okay. Ooh, nice move. <laughs> ah, rebound, you know, d -Song. Get up, Baines. God damn, man. You follow on nothing. Casper push you. <laughs> what are we doing here, man? I, I Honestly, I, Lowry's takes. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. Pass out. What are we doing? <laughs> Pump fake. <laughs> ah, rebound. Push, push, push. What are we doing? <laughs> Bruh, they stole it, bro. Lowry, that's your only big mistake, man. Other than that, man, like you, you tried, man. You tried, you tried, you tried. Foul somebody now. Pascal's the foul, bruh. Look at this shit, man, bruh. Like zero oh and three. Lowry's like, God damn, yo. Zero oh and three. Look at Pascal knows. Pascal, when does Pascal foul out and then just go back? Just go straight to the locker room. Straight to the locker room, cause he knows. He's sussing. Palms will always be sweater, sweaty. Bubble. No bubble. Blow up bubble. Kid bubble. They don't matter. Palms will always be sweaty. And that's Game Boy and on Nintendo. Bruh. Like, this is actually straight atrocity. Atrocious, man. Like, bruh, are you... <laughs> 0 oh, and 3, like, I, bro, I understand, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, you lose Abaka, you lose Gasol, you know, it's not the same in Cetrix and all that type of stuff, but Pascal, like, you averaged 24 last year. Now you're averaging 18. Bro, like, <sighs> man, they're acting, oh, the bubble, so he's going to be himself, and this, like, it was not the fact that it was the bubble. It was the fact that it's a pressure moment. Any pressure moment. Like, this is what you got to understand, yo. I try to tell y'all with this nigga, man. I try to tell y'all from time. I told y'all from earlier in the regular season last year. From, from like, the jump. Even, like, any big game. That's what I try to tell y'all. Any big game. I said, you know what? I know what he's going to be going into the season because I just know even from when he was with Kawhi in certain moments, the fact that they put Embiid on him and they put like, okay, now force you just to shoot. He started breaking and his palms were sweaty. You know what I'm saying? In moments, even as a second option. So I said, all right, this is a red flag. Already. Because you're not supposed to have any fear. It's not the fact that you're missing. It's the fact that you have fear. You won't even shoot no more. You know what I'm saying? When you have fear, that means you're basically saying, ah, shit, I can't do nothing. You're copping out to it. If you're trying and you're missing, it's just a bad day. But when you don't even move like how you move, that's what I say all the time. When it now it's clutch, it's clutch time, there's pressure or now a main guy is on you or a better defender and now you don't move how you normally move. What I mean by that, your takes aren't the same. He might be getting, if you, like the great guys, and this is what I'm talking about, this is different context into the psyche, the different levels and the deep thinking, deep context of the game. 
If there's an elite guy on you, let's say Kawhi, and there's an elite defender on you, and yes, you might struggle because he's an elite defender. But if your struggle is you're still taking the same takes, it's just hella contested now because that nigga has good, great defense. He's contesting Jimmy Butler, sliding his feet. You're trying to do your same, you do your spin fade, same fade, same step backs. You, and it's just hella contested because a great defender is on you. Then you could say he played hella defense. I need you to get better and actually cook. You know what I'm saying? But now when a great defender is on you and you're now, you won't even do the same takes. You're only trying to draw a foul or you're trying to just run into the paint. Now you do complete different takes. That's when I know your palms are sweaty. You have fear in your brain and fear in your eyes and fear in your heart. That's what that is. So can I ever trust you to be the number one? Because as a number one guy, you're always going to be in that situation where you're going to have the best defender on you. They're going to try and stop you. So you get in a free bucket or get it is limited than you having a great defender on you. They're paying attention to you at all times. You can't escape. He has to earn every bucket. Don't just leave him in the corner. No, run to him and leave that guy. That's the type of context that happens when you're the number one guy. So as a number two guy, when you're already having fearful moments like that, all that great stuff already to me was erased because I know when Kawhi leaves, you now have to be elevated to number one. I already saw flashes of those as the number two. This is called deep cut. This is called looking at IQ and understanding how things transpire. Not just looking at stats and be like, oh my God, Pascal. Looking at the context of the game. So I already called this from time. And even then, I gave this man the benefit of the doubt because y'all are obviously doing whatever you're doing. I said, you know what? I'll give you benefit of the doubt as number one. Let me at least wait to see some one, two things. I'm waiting. I'm watching you in a big game as a number one option. I'm watching you. And then what happens? Big games as number one option throughout the whole season. Palm sweaty, palm sweaty, palm sweaty. I said, yo, it's only going to get worse in playoffs. People are like, no, he's going to get better. No, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get more pressure. And it's only going to get worse. Y'all think he's going to get better? When you're not even, you're still showing fearful. You only snap first when Mara Hazonia is on you. Now you're going to work doing step back threes and doing all this kind of elite takes. And then Giannis is on you. Palms are sweaty. You want to just go to the spin? Bruh, like I've seen this from time. And that's what I was trying to enlighten y'all and warn y'all and show y'all that, listen, I got that IQ. That's what I do. Be ready for disaster come playoffs. And what happens, y'all, in the bubble scene, I will try, like, Marcus Smart averaged more points than him in that series versus Boston. Like, can you understand that? Marcus Smart's supposed to be, like, their fifth best player offensively. You have Tatum. You have Kemba. You have Brown. Then you have Hayward. And then you have Smart. <laughs> and he, he averaged more than your number one option. Just under, like, just take that in. Take that in. And y'all, oh my God, no, 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 no. It was just the bubble. He wasn't himself. Now they could, whatever, they could just say anything to you. And then you just believe. That's why I say you don't just, just because someone said something does not mean it's not cap. It's all caps. Caps lock. Every type of cap. Bottle cap. Fitted cap. Snapback cap. Or whatever cap you want to say. It's all caps. Bro, like, oh, it was, I was at myself. And, and I don't want to hear that shit. If you weren't yourself, <laughs> just for that bubble, then you were never yourself because that's who you be. That's who you are. Then that means you're an impersonator this whole lifetime. Your soul is just, I don't know, man. Like, bro, I, I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Like, I already, uh, and then I know who, this is the same type of hope and faith that y'all gave to Rosen. Palm and palms are sweaty. I can see in the eyes. That palms is sweaty from a mile away. I can just look at the demeanor. Like, man can tell, man. If you, Because if you play ball, you know. I'm someone, when I played in the clutch time, I trust, man. I was, the, I was the bucket getter. So I know. I know how you're supposed to move. I know the type of mentality you have to have. I know. I know. Like, bro, I just... I've seen up firsthand, man's killing in practice. Buckets, buckets, runs, buckets. Once the game comes on, you take it. I've seen it. I've been a part of it. So I know what, uh, what frail looks like. I know. 
Bro, I've been called it like the bro. You can't, you could work on your skill all day. You can work on this all day, work on that all day, work on these. <laughs> go to the, you no, know, go to the runs, go to Rico Hines, do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, when the moment comes and people are looking like, oh my God. And look, this is all with no fans. But you understand, pressure is pressure. With fans, it's added pressure. But without fans, it's still pressure. Man's know they're televised. Man's knows it's the NBA. Man's knows this is what elite looks like. Man's knows people are watching. Even if people aren't watching physically. It don't matter. Pressure is pressure. That's why you've seen the same shit with the bubble. Same type of shit. Obviously, it's more on a higher level when you actually have fans yelling at you and all that type of stuff. And they're cussing. And you, man, you're going to go shoot. You see hands and weight and all that type of stuff. Like, that's different. But regardless, pressure is pressure. If your palms are sweaty and you're mentally frail, you might be a little bit better with no fans. But regardless, you can't handle pressure. So don't matter what type of pressure it is. Don't matter if it's a squeeze pressure. It don't matter if it's a it's a vice grip pressure. It don't matter if it's a slap on the back pressure. It don't matter if it's a barber slap pressure. No matter what type of pressure it is. You will always be frail more than the next man. You can't change that. That's just their character makeup. Some people are just mentally fugazi. When the lights is bright, they be like there and they run away. Some It's just like that. You can't change it. You can't change it. You can work on your skill set. You can try and work on it all the time. But at the end of the day, if the mental is frail, the skill will never be applied. And there's lot, there's so many players that are like that. That's why there's a difference between a star or sorry, a hall of famer or sorry, a great, a superstar, a star, great player, role player, basic nigga. There's different levels to this. There's why there's levels to this because of the tangibles. And this clutch time I trust mine is the biggest intangible of all. Don't let media fool you. And act like, oh, it's but the fourth quarter. He didn't do nothing the fourth, but it doesn't matter. They blare stuff throughout the three quarters. That shit don't, bruh. Like, that's it. Anyways, but I'm not even going to go into the depths of that. I'm not even going to go into the depths of that. That's just a different discussion. But at the end of the day, y'all need to understand that this is not what Elite looks like. 0 3 does not mean the Raptors won't make the playoffs. It does not mean that the Raptors, you know what I mean, is all of a sudden done, but they're in a scary spot. And this is what I was trying to tell people. Like, they're in a scary spot because, like, you're a window. You've been a contender for so long. You want a ring. And normally when you win a ring, you don't ju just drop off like that, especially with no injuries. Golden State has excuses. They lost KD, but even then, they still have injuries, big injuries. And then Clay again, another injury, back to back. You know what I'm saying? Curry injury. Like, they have injuries, so they can get away with it. But the Raptors win a ring and then you drop off like this? With no injuries? Only Kawhi left. You still have your main core. You still just like Pascal got better. You still have Lowry. You still have Van Fleet. You even had a Bach and Gasol last year. Exit second round. Okay. It was a tough series. Seven games. Now you lose a Bach and Gasol. And now y'all want to hope to sign someone next year in big time free agency. Sign a big time free agent. When y'all are going to, might not, you might be low tier playoffs or might not make playoffs. You never know, but it's not looking good right now. But even then, I still have them as low, low bottom, bottom seed in the East, which means from five below. That's what I've always had them. If I had to guess and put my hand, it would be like six, seven. I wouldn't see five, especially look at Atlanta improving. Like all these, all these teams are improving. You know what I'm saying? So. The Nets, you know what I'm saying? When you look at that, so I'm like, uh, no. You know what I'm saying? But still, this is the mistake, and they're in a scary territory where you all you automatically, after this year, if you don't do good this year and you get nobody in free agency, you automatically are in rebuild mode. Automatically. Automatically rebuild mode. And you're stuck with Pascal. You're stuck with Van Fleet. You're in the worst case scenario. Why? Because you didn't go for lower tier free agents. People are like, oh my God, they couldn't get Christian Wood in the salary cap. And this, you, know, you could have finessed. I'm not even saying, I'm even saying Raptors have to be realistic. When have you got somebody in free agency that just came to the Raptors? Why are you relying on Giannis? All these big names, your own big name left you. You think someone else, a big name from somebody else is going to come to you? And then Giannis re-signs and sets the president. Now Rudy re-signs and Bear Man's re-signed already. 
Paul George resign? It's only Kawhi, but Kawhi most likely will resign. And then what's going to happen? Raptors are going to be stuck with having nobody. And because they, 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 they plan for this free agency in 2021 coming up, that they're going to have to sign somebody. And then what's going to happen? You're going to see DeRozan come back. That's why he opted in so he can match with the Raptors in free agency. He can come back. I, re- I could smell it. I could smell it. I could feel it in the air. I could feel it. They're going to get nobody, and then they're going to have to get somebody. So it's like, oh, at least we got somebody, DeRozan. And then they're going to see the fans all oh, hype again, at least. So that at least they could keep this somewhat winning instead of just rebuilding. So at least they can appease to the fans or whatever. That's what they think. And that's what's most likely going to happen because you're not, like you're never going to sign somebody of that caliber. We have all the history that proves that. So for me, that's why I was saying, forget this 2021. You have crucial guys that you could you could assign Christian Wood to even big money. Doesn't mean he actually would have done it, but I know Raptors didn't pursue him like that because again, they didn't even sign a Baca to a multi-year deal. So why would they sign Christian Wood who's looking for a multi-year deal? They, I know they didn't even look at him. A Baca they entertain because maybe a Baca for one year could maybe stay. But a Baca again won a multi-years. He's older. And he doesn't want to be, you know what I mean, guaranteed free agent next year with the big class. So you look at it from that person, you want some security. So I already know they didn't go after Christian Wood. Why would they go after Christian Wood when their whole play this offseason was only one will get multi-years. It's a Van Fleet because he might be, he's probably the future point guard. And everybody else is just one-year deals. So we could be eligible for next year. That's clearly what they were doing. That's their game plan this whole offseason. So I know they didn't even look those guys' ways. I already know. So when you look at it like y'all just going to drop off in production, record, and all that type of stuff based off the Fugazi roster, and then now you're not going to get nobody or you might not get nobody next year or this offseason, and then what? The Rosen? And then all of this was for nothing? No backup plan? Just full out? Or what? The Rosen is your backup plan? Like, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you got to be at some time. Some, this is what the Raptors' downfall has always been with the fan base, with everybody. This, they have false hope. False hope and into unrealistic things. Not IQ when it really gets to the push. When push comes to shove to that breaking moment, that big game-changing moment, it's never IQ. Just look at it before I even finish. These mans, Masai. Right. Remember, DeRozan was with the Raptors. They let go of Casey. And even then, there's a whole negative hoopla for Masai when he let go of Casey. Right. Same offseason. He's now trading DeRozan for Kawhi. Right. What is the first thing that Raptors fans do? No, 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 no. What is this Kawhi? No. They start bashing Masai for the trade. This is just you got to understand. This is the the trajectory. And this is how the history how it pans out and how it goes with the Raptors. Every single time you're at a groundbreaking move where you could, it's a big move. So it's going to change the Raptors in a great direction, direction, but you have to sacrifice on a one, two thing on a guy you loved or whatever the case is. Those moves where it's like, do I really give up this for this? But this is so IQ that I have to, the Raptors don't go with the, I have to, they go with the more loyal or the more have hope and have faith in these, this, this Fugazi guy, give him extra more time. No, 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 give it. And that's what they always go through. Always false hope has been the negative for even any just rap, just Canadian teams in general or Toronto teams in general, especially Raptors. That's how it's always been. Like I said, with the DeRozan trade, the way the fans were talking, you would think Masai didn't even make an IQ move because they were so they were yelling and just so in uproar. Then what happens? Another move where you could have got the Conley or whatever. Remember, they didn't do it. OG, no, OG's going to false hope. OG's going to, you know, he's going to. And then another move, Pascal. You could throw Pascal and OG or whatever for the, the, the rest, Brooke, Paul George, and Kawhi. No, 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 no. Pascal's going to, Pascal's going to false hope again. Pascal's going to, Pascal's going to. No, we're going to go get Giannis. Forget all these guys that we're coming in with, whatever, you know what I mean? Giannis is going to, Giannis is going to, Giannis is going <laughs> to. That's the false hope. Consistently. Then what happens? 
False hope. Y'all were happy that they traded DeRozan. False hope. Now Giannis resigns. And oh my God, what do we really do? False hope. We should trade Pascal now. We should trade Pascal for Harden. That's what we should be doing. Forget Pascal, man. Enough of this guy. Always it comes down to that. Belief, belief, belief with no IQ and unrealistic. And then, ah, shit, we should have, you know, we, now yeah, that, that's been the trajectory always. That's Raptors in a nutshell. If you know, you know. Bro, like, it, honestly, like, it's just terrible, man. It's actually terrible. It's horrendous. I think the Raptors will have, like, if they go 0-4, like, let's see what their next game is. Like, bro, like, 0-3 is already atrocious. Like, you, you're, you, bro, you're, you're a bottom-tier team right now. Bottom-tier team. Like, bro, <laughs> you guys are a bottom-tier team, man. Like, this is actually crazy, man. Bruh, it's just atrocious at the end of the day, man. Like, let's go see. What do they have next? They have New York next. If y'all don't beat New York, if y'all don't beat New York, listen, I can't even say if y'all don't beat New York. Because if we look at it, let's go look at the stands. I can't even say if y'all don't beat New York. How can I say that? When New York at least has a game, they won something. If anything, we should. New York should be saying, if y'all don't beat the Raptors, that's what it should be. Look how the roles have changed. Bruh. Obviously, I don't expect us to keep up like this and just stay like this, right? But New York is two and two. New York has won two games. Look at the old, the old teams. Detroit 0 and 4. Washington 0 and 4. Raptors 0 and 3. Even Chicago won a game. Charlotte won a game. Like, that's what I'm saying. All the teams that were lower tier have improved. Orlando 4 and 0. We don't expect that to sustain. The Hawks 3 and 0. They look like they're going to be better regardless. I'm not saying no team is going to be 80 of 75 and 0, 72 and 0. The Pacers 3 and 1, Cleveland 3 and 1. Philly 3 and 1. Nets 2 and 2, they obviously lost one. Kyrie and them were out. The Knicks 2 and 2, Boston Celtics 2 and 2, Milwaukee 2 and 2. Miami's even 1 and 2. But at least they have a game like 0 and 3, like bro, it is what it is, man. We'll see obviously. You know, I'm not saying that the Raptors are just going to be a lottery team. But this could be one of those things where they just go, you know what? Pack it in. Can they? And maybe go for someone in the draft. But like, I don't, bro. Like, you can't do that because you have your hopes. You're, you sold everything on next year's fragrancy. So you doing that bad this year is going to affect you, like I said, next year. So you have to, next, the, the off season of last year that just passed, or the season, 2020 off season, was literally correlate. It correlates straight to the 2021 off season, like they went hand in hand. You can't have a great 2021 off season without a decent or solid 2020 off season because it changed. If your off season in 2020 is good, your team is at least still an intact, solid top four team, maybe five at worst. You know what I'm saying? Out second round is you could still have a play to attract someone in 2021. But if you drop off, you know, we're not going to pick up anybody in 2020 offseason. We're going to keep leave it all out for the big fish in 2021. Now you have Aaron Baines and Alex Land. Now you don't actually do nothing. Let's say you eighth seed, seventh seed, and then, you know, get exit first round. You think you're going to be able to affect change and bring someone in in 2021 free agency? You think someone's going to look at that and come to an eighth seed? A big fish? <laughs> They thought about this all the way wrong. They thought about this all the way wrong. Bruh, it is what it is, man. Anyways, it's true talks, because true talks. Share, like, and subscribe. You already know we out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. You feel me? Bruh. <laughs> this is, it's like, it's just even just ugly watching. Like, and they be up. That's the only positive sign you could get from them is the fact that they actually be up. But is it really a positive? Is it a negative? Because the fact that you're losing in clutch, the fact that you're losing in clutch, I'd rather you be down and then come back in the clutch, but then you still lose. At least it's like, okay, we just got to fix the beginning. But the fact that you're up and in every game when pressure push comes to the shove, you be losing, that's a worse sign. That's actually a worse sign. I'd rather the other way around. <laughs> Bruh, that's... Oh, my God, yo. You already know, man. It's atrocious, man. Let me know what you think in the comment section, what the Raptors should do. Did you foresee this? I tried to warn you for the last years. I tried to warn y'all, man. 
I tried to. And y'all just ridiculed the boy. But it's okay. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, as long as y'all know, I knew first. As long as y'all know, I knew first. Bruh. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Bruh, we'll see, man. It is what it is. And I'm out, man.